Hey guys, welcome back to the other side of the coin. Look, let's get straight into this match review. Honestly, I'm not entirely happy. I think we showed great character to come back to a three-all situation, but let's be honest, it's two points, 100% dropped. I mean, let's not kid around ourselves. Let's not make any mistakes about the fact that West Brom is somewhere where we should have got three points. I've said it in my um, pre-match uh, you know, review that we, we shouldn't be complacent in this match. We should not take West Brom lightly because they've just, you know, they, they lost two games in the beginning. They lost to Leicester, they lost to Everton, and they were always going to come out hard in this particular match. And, you know, Premier League is such a beast that nothing is forgiven. So, you know, I, I feel like in that first half, and I know we're going to get into it, uh, getting the whole match analysis part down the track in this video, but I just want to say that we weren't up for it. We weren't ready. We were mentally just, you know, asleep. So it's, I, I don't know who you blame here, obviously individual errors, but at the same time, I think Frank definitely needs to take some blame. So look, before we get into all of that, guys, if you're here for the first time, subscribe, smash that like button, guys, if you're already here, help me, you know, get to at least 100 likes for this particular video and helps out the channel a lot and hit that bell notification to stay in touch with all my content. So guys, First of all, let's talk about the lineup. We'll talk about the lineup. We'll talk about the match. We'll talk about where Frank kind of went wrong. We'll talk about the second half and then sort of summarize the overall situation here. First of all, lineup, guys. As soon as I saw the lineup, I was a little bit bemused because, you know, when, when I saw Caballero perfect, I expected Caballero to start. He deserves to start. You know, Reese James in the right back. And the first situation was in, in the center back position. Thiago Silva, I sort of expected he was going to start because at the end of the day, he, he's the leader that we've been looking for. So fair enough, he started. But Christensen, as much as he had a good game, I was sort of wondering, well, how has he deserved to start here? Where was Zuma? Zuma wasn't even in the squad. So that's number one question, what's happening there? And then in the left back, Marcus Alonso. As soon as I saw that in the lineup, I'm like, well, that's a disaster to happen because every team out there targets this particular player because he's... He's a, he's a nuisance, to be honest. He's, he's slow. He's not capable of defending. And we'll get into all of that in this video anyway. But as soon as I saw him in the left-back position, I was like, well, that doesn't make sense in the, in, the, in the whole criteria of giving people opportunity on the basis of merit because I don't know how he deserves to start when you've got the likes of Emerson who had a really, really good game against Barnsley. You could even have um, Espilicueta. And then, you know, you said that Chilwell would be part of this squad and he wasn't even there either. So I'm not really sure what's happening with all the messages that was provided to us pre-match uh, by Frank Lampard. In the middle, Kante Kovacic, which we all expected that. And then up front, once again, we kind of expected Tammy Abraham, Kai Havertz, Mason Mount and Timo Werner. As much as I said it as well in my pre-match uh, video, I don't like the fact Mason Mount plays in the wings because he's far more effective in the midfield. I would prefer Callum and but I knew that was going to happen because of his work rate, because of how, how intense Mason Mount is. So overall, I think the back line was the biggest sort of issue for me in terms of lineup. But nonetheless, I thought it was still good enough to get the three points against uh, West Brom. So now let's talk about the match. All right. First half... You can see, you know, within the first few minutes, once again, our passing, our pressing, it wasn't on top. It wasn't on top. And a team like West Brom was just hungry. They were just looking for an opportunity. And they targeted Marcus Alonso. Marcus Alonso was heavily targeted. And straight away, the first goal, that header, cushion header down to the West Brom, you know, attacker on the run, and then before you know it, we were all exposed at the back. Yes, you can probably complain that Reese James could have done better to drive back quicker and could have done better to stop that shot, but it all culminated from that Marcus, Marcus Alonso uh, scenario where he headers it down. He could have headed it anywhere, but he headed it straight to the West Brom attacker that was on the run and facing straight to our centre back. So that's number one issue. You know, we, we could be critical about Caballero in terms of perhaps that's a shot he could go down and save. And this is why, you know, we need Mendy. You know, until we have Mendy, Chilwell, honestly, I don't know if we can truly judge this team. Um, I think it'd be 
pretty harsh to blame Rhys James for that first goal, albeit I think he could have done better. He should have done a little bit better to stop that shot. Second goal. So first goal obviously goes in. You, you know, you, you're, sort of, you're sort of upset that we're behind, but at the same time you're thinking that's only one goal. We should have enough talent to come back. Second goal. And this is something, I mean, yeah, this is becoming a theme now, this individual errors, right? So out of all the players, you probably don't expect Thiago Silva to do that. And he slips in the middle of absolutely no man's land. And, you know, there's no, no one after him. And Callum, I think it was Callum Robinson, um, who takes the ball, drives in and, you know, scores one-on-one -on -one against um, Caballero. And at that point... You know, you can tell the heads have dropped. My feelings have dropped massively in the sense that we've seen these individual errors from so many players and now we're seeing it from Thiago Silva. I don't want to be too harsh on him because that was his debut in Premier League. But at the same time, you've got to start questioning that. Where is the mentality of this entire group? You know, they need to be focused when they come in the match. I know a slip like that can happen, but, you know, this we, we're seeing these errors far too often. So... Anyway, even after that, you felt like you needed a leader in the team. We gave Thiago Silva the captaincy, but I felt that was something that was lacking in that game, that there was no one out there screaming out loud or picking these boys up. Spilicota was obviously in the bench um, and, and nonetheless is not overly uh, you know, vocal in the pitch, but we, we were lacking that particular character that's just going to grab everyone and go, wake up, wake up. We're, we're literally just letting go of three points here. And before you know it, funnily enough, straight after that second goal, we actually had a good sequence of play where we were getting closer and closer to scoring. Um, there was a couple of opportunities from Tammy Abraham. There was a one really nice cross from Brees James where Tammy absolutely fluffed it. He should have scored that. He had a couple of opportunities like that where he fluffed it. Thankfully enough, he scored that goal right at the end, but you know, that was just a tap in. Um, Mason Mount put a nice ball through to Timo Werner, which hit the post. And, you know, we, we had chances to come back in that match. But once again, nothing was working for us up front either. At the same time, I wasn't really impressed with the way we were attacking. Yes, we opened them up a couple of times, but I wasn't seeing enough of those really, really nice passes and opening intricate passes to open things up. It was a lot more of the sideways stuff. And obviously, when, once West Brom scored two, they were going to drop back and, and defend their hearts out. And before you know it, the third goal comes in. And once again, the third goal, guys... You know, Marcus Alonso, off, off, I think it was a corner, and you know he, he was marking a player, and then for some reason, he just felt the need to just walk away from that player and left uh, that, that particular West Brom defender, I believe, Bartley, uh, by himself. Reese James, at the same time, wasn't aware of what was going on, and that's bad on him again. He needs to be aware of what's, what's going on around him. Doesn't go up, leaves Bartley by himself. Bartley gets the ball. And it's 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 open goal to be honest, you know, you, you can't really blame Caballero from that distance, and that's three nil. So guys, that's half time, and I'm thinking, wow, how do we come back from this? But luckily enough, you know, Frank obviously changed a few things up at half time, took off Alonso, and this is the issue when you take off Alonso at half time, you know you've made a mistake of selecting him. We've seen so many poor performances from Alonso, yet he keeps starting. So that's bad on Lampard to keep selecting him. And then um, uh, Callum and comes on as well in, in, instead of Kovacic and Mason Mount drops into midfield. I think that was probably reasonable because who else are you going to take off? You, you want Mason's energy and you want Mason's, um, uh, you want Mason's you know, drive and uh, that, that ability to score from midfield, which obviously we saw. So, and then the second half, obviously, as it started... Uh, you know, Mason kicks kicks things off, and I'm not one bit surprised that he was able to score that kind of goal from midfield because that's where he thrives. For me, it's not in the wings. He wasn't bad in the wings. He was okay, but he's far more efficient in the midfield where that's his natural habitat. And you know, I'm not one bit surprised that he comes up with that beautiful shot and then uh, you know scores a screamer. To be honest, so yeah. We need to understand that we need to start playing players in the right position as opposed to just trying to fit them wherever and whenever. Uh, and once again, also, also Callum and scoring from the left side. He looked very dynamic in, in the left wing area, you know, had that nice intricate passing sequence with Werner, Kai Havertz. All throughout the match, Kai Havertz was playing some really, really nice passes, uh, putting people through. And that one 
for Callum and Nodoy. Nicely slides it through and Callum with a beautiful finish puts it away. And at that point, 3-2, I started believing that we're probably going to level the match out. But that's the sequence of play that I want to see more often. Opening teams up with that level of passing. That's how you unlock a team. It's not always necessarily let's pass sideways, take it to Reese James and cross it in and you know just hope for the best because that, I don't think that's very effective enough. You can use that as a variation, but you should try and open teams up with that level of passing. And then, of course, eventually enough right at the end, guys, we get that equaliser, albeit probably lucky. Uh, probably it was a handball with Kai Havertz. Maybe it wasn't, but... Um, I don't know, a lot of people are saying that, you know, we got lucky. Nonetheless, we got the, you know, equaliser and we get the one point. Now, when you look at the whole match, you think, okay, you know, we were 3-0 down, we came back, we showed great character and that's fine. But we shouldn't be in that situation in the first place. That's the thing. You know, we need to be in a better mindset going into, especially in matches against, no disrespect to West Brom, matches against West Brom, we should be putting them away. We should not be 3-0 down and have a mountain to climb. Um, and, and the other point, you know, is that especially Mason Mount and Callum Antonador playing in their natural positions, uh, you know, just does wonders. Now, in terms of Frank Lampard, I think we already touched on the starting lineup. We've touched on, you know, players playing in their natural positions. The substitution, guys, that Olivier Giroud substitution, I think that needs to have a massive question mark on, on it because... At that point of the game, it was 3-2, we were coming back, Callum was looking fantastic, Timo Werner was sort of coming into the game, he hit the, I think he had a nice, another shot which which just fizzed over, and then he puts in, you know, Frank puts in Olivier Giroud, and you know, Thiago Silva comes out, which is fine, but we were left with Tammy, Giroud, and Timo Werner, and then all of a sudden, Callum Antonio had to be, you know, a left wing back, because we went with three at the back, and honestly, that substitution made no sense to me, because... When you have that many forwards, like you don't know who's doing what. It sort of looked like Tammy was dragged out to the right. That's not his position, even though at the end that's how he scored the goal. You know, luckily enough, he was in that spot. But you know, I feel like that was very much coincidental as opposed to that being the plan. But you know, I think yeah, that that substitution was very very strange to me. I think all the other ones, okay, kind of make sense, but that one definitely has massive question marks. So, guys, overall. Um, all I want to say is that we, we, we've got to we've got to sharpen up. You know, if we are going to be serious in this league and we are looking to in this season, uh, you know, reduce the gap between Liverpool and Manchester City, we've got to sharpen up quick. We've got to select the right team. We've got to put the players in the right position. Timo Werner, I'm not really sure how effective he is on the left side as opposed to when he's in the centre forward area where he likes to roam around anywhere and, and likes that freedom. Him being on the left, I don't know if that's very, very efficient. So we need to find a solution uh, in, in regards to that. But I think, you know, a lot will change once we have Ziyech, Chilwell, uh, Pulisic hopefully back and we, we are probably going to see a better sort of setup. So guys, let me know what your thoughts were about the whole match, all of these things about lineup, you know, um, the way we played, first half, second half, substitution, Frank Lampard sort of, you know, tactical awareness and whatnot player uh you know who impressed you who didn't guys let me know what your thoughts are and uh if you've enjoyed this video smash the like button if you're here for the first time subscribe and hit the bell notification to stay in touch with all my content until next time see you